Hi, my name is Milan and in this video I'll show you how you can deploy and run a .NET application inside of a Docker container using Amazon's Elastic Container Service. I'll walk you through the entire process from building your Docker image to pushing that image to Elastic Container Registry to setting up your ECS cluster so that we can finally run our .NET application using ECS. I also want to say a huge thank you to AWS for sponsoring this video and helping me bring AWS closer to the .NET community. Now let's start by demonstrating the application that we are going to deploy to ECS. So this is the application that I want to deploy to AWS using Elastic Container Service. We have a couple of minimal API endpoints for fetching a product by the ID, for listing all of the products, and for creating, updating, and deleting a product. So we have a pretty basic CRUD API, and we are actually using the JSON placeholder API for managing the underlying posts. We have an iBlog API interface, which is actually a refit client that we have decorated with the respective attributes, and these represent the API routes. When we start the application, source generation is going to kick in, and refit is going to generate a proper API client that we can use when we inject the interface inside of our minimal APIs, and this is going to communicate with the third-party API that we are using for crowd operations on the post entity. So let me start the application using the Docker file and just show you how this works. If I open up Docker Desktop, you can see the one container that we have running, which is the Refit API container, and it's running the Refit API dev image, which is an image that Visual Studio automatically builds from the Docker file that we have inside of our solution. So this is how we can run our Docker container using this image, and this is the API that we get. So let me just show you that a few of these endpoints are working. I can list a bunch of posts and get them from our third party API. I can filter by the user identifier and get back the posts for a particular user. I can fetch a given post by the ID and even delete it. And all of the other endpoints are also working as expected. So I'm not going to demonstrate them. Now let's go into Visual Studio and check out our Docker file. This is the Docker file that you can easily scaffold from Visual Studio by right clicking on your project saying add and then docker support. And this is what you will typically get for a .NET 8 project. We have a base image, the ASP.NET Core image, which is going to actually run our application in the end, but we're using the SDK image to build the application. And we're just copying around some files, running .NET restore, .NET build, publishing the application and finally running it. And we're also exposing the ports 8080 and 8081 on the container. Based on this Docker file, we can build a respective image of our application that we can run inside of a container. So what we want to do is to build a Docker image and then push that to Elastic Container Registry so that we can run it inside of the Elastic Container Service. So let me first give you a short introduction into these services before we jump into the AWS console. Our final goal is to run our .NET application inside of Amazon ECS. ECS stands for Elastic Container Service, and it is one of the core services in AWS for working with Docker containers. But before we dive into the ECS service and discuss how we can use it to run our Docker containers, we have to somehow manage to push and store our Docker containers in AWS. And this is where another AWS service comes in. And this service is called Amazon ECR. ECR stands for Elastic Container Registry. And here are some of the things that you get using Amazon's ECR service. You get a fully managed Docker container registry that you can use to publish version and in general manage your Docker containers. The ECR service is fully integrated with ECS, which you are going to see when we actually get to running our ECR containers. And as I said, ECR is a secure, scalable and reliable service for working with your Docker containers. So what we are going to do is to build a Docker image, push that image to the ECR service and then use it inside of ECS. Now, Amazon ECS is short for Amazon Elastic Container Service. This is what the ECS service looks like if you are a visual learner. And here are a few things that you get with ECS or the Elastic Container Service. This is a fully managed container orchestration service in AWS. Because it's fully managed, it means that you don't have to do the work. Instead, AWS does the work for you and you get a simple way to run your applications inside of Docker containers. And as I already said, ECS supports Docker containers containers, and it also integrates with many other AWS services, among other EC2, which is the actual compute instance that is going to be running your container instances. The Elastic Container Service has two different launch types that you can use. The first one is EC2, or Elastic Compute Cloud, and the second one is Fargate. 
So what is the difference between using EC2 or Fargate to run your ECS containers? You can think of EC2 and Fargate like comparing unmanaged and fully managed services. EC2 allows you to rent a compute instance where you can decide how much CPU or memory you need, and this will represent the available capacity that you can use for running your containers. Fargate, on the other hand, also uses EC2 under the hood for the actual compute, however, this is abstracted from you. So we could consider Fargate the serverless approach, and it's only serverless because you don't have to manage any servers, but actually AWS is going to do the server management for you. So this is actually the approach that I want to show you. We're going to use Fargate to deploy our .NET application inside of a Docker container, but everything I show you will work just the same if you're using EC2. The only thing that changes is how you're actually running your container instances. So this completes our short introduction into ECR, ECS, the different launch types, and now let's jump into the AWS console and let me actually show you how to use this. I'm going to start from the AWS dashboard and the first service that we are going to use is the Elastic Container Registry. So let's look for ECR and I'm going to open up the Elastic Container Registry and we're going to start by creating a repository for our images. Let's go ahead and give our repository a name and I'm going to call it just refit API. I'm going to leave all of the other settings with their default values and create my ECR repository. Then we can go into the repository itself, the refit API, and this is where we get our images that we have uploaded. So right now we don't have any images, so we will have to build the image locally and then push that image into the ECR repository. And what makes this entire process simpler is that you can click this button here, view push commands, and it's going to give you the actual step-by-step -step instructions that you should follow to authenticate with ECR, to build your image, tag the image, and push it into your ECR repository. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy the first command here, and I'm going to open up a command line interface from the root project of my refit API, and I'm going to paste the command that we have just copied. And I can run this command, and we will get a message, login succeeded. So our command worked successfully. Now let me actually break down what is going on here. We're using the AWS CLI to execute this command. So if you don't have it, I recommend that you install the AWS CLI because it's the simplest way to work with ECR. And then the first command that we have here is authenticating with ECR and we are specifying the ECR region that we are using. And then we are piping the results of this command, which actually give us back the login password into the docker login command, which is going to authenticate the AWS username and the password that we got from the previous command and is going to use it to authenticate with this ECR repository. For all of this to work, your machine has to actually be authenticated with AWS, which I already did by storing my credentials on this machine. So let's move on to the next step. And the next step is to actually build your Docker image. Now this command won't work with my folder structure, so I'll have to change it slightly. So I'm going to run docker build, tag the image that I'm building as refit API. The build context is going to be the current folder, and then I'm going to specify the path to the docker file, which is nested in the refit API folder. So let's go ahead and run this. This is going to build our docker image, and is going to apply the appropriate tag. And when all of this completes, our image builds successfully, and I can open up docker desktop, and go into images, and we can see the refit API image here with the tag of latest that we have just built using the docker build command. The next thing that we will have to do is to tag our newly created image, which is refit API latest, with this tag here, which is scoped to our ECR repository. So let me run this command. It's going to tag my image, and what this is going to do is create another instance of our image with a different tag. And we're going to use this tag to push our image into ECR. And the command that we have to use to do this is docker push, and then specify the tag of the image that we are pushing. So I'm going to run this command, and this is going to upload my Docker image into ECR, this might take a moment depending on your upload speed, and when this completes, your image will be available in the ECR repository. And now that we have our image locally, what we can do is actually run the image inside of a container. So let's say I want to map it to port 4000 on my local machine. I can specify some environment variables like the ASP.NET Core environment, and let's say the value is development, 
and then I can give it the name of my image. I will say refit API latest. And this is going to spin up a container instance of my image that's going to run locally. And this is essentially what we want to do in ECS. So let me go ahead and stop this and let's go back to our ECR repository. If I go ahead and refresh this repository, you can see that we have one image with the tag of latest and this is what we're going to run in our Elastic Container service. So I'm going to open up the AWS console in another tab and here I want to navigate into the Elastic Container Service. And the first thing that we are going to do is to create an ECS cluster. An ECS cluster allows us to define some infrastructure capacity that we can use to run our containers. Our containers can be run either as tasks or services, and you can consider an ECS cluster as a logical grouping of tasks and services. Now we have to give our cluster a name, and let's call it the refit API cluster. And after assigning the name, we have to choose how we are going to provision our infrastructure. Now I'm going to use AWS Fargate, which is the serverless option where we don't have to manage any servers and AWS is going to take care of that for us. But alternatively, you could choose an Amazon EC2 instance and you can go ahead and create an instance yourself, use an existing one that you already have, and this just gives you more control, but you're also responsible for managing your EC2 instance yourself. With Fargate, AWS takes care of many things. So I'm going to leave all of the other options with their default values and create my ECS cluster. Now, while our cluster is being provisioned, we can go into our task definitions and create a new task definition. A task definition will represent what we can actually run inside of an ECS cluster. So let's call this the refit API task definition. And the next thing we have to do is to specify the infrastructure requirements for running our task. Now I'm going to choose AWS Fargate. We're going to run this on a Linux machine. And let's say we need one virtual CPU and two gigabytes of memory. Now this is going to represent our total capacity and we may use less than the total capacity to run an actual container instance. You're going to see this later. We also need to choose a role. I can use an existing one that I have from earlier, but you can also choose to create a new role and one is going to be automatically created. And then the next important step is actually choosing the container that we want to run inside of this task definition. So let's go ahead and give our container a name. Let's say refit API instance. And then I'm going to go over to ECR and copy the URI of this image. I'm going to paste this into the image URI field to configure the image that I want to be running inside of this container. And it's also important to configure the correct port mappings here so that you could actually access your container instance. Now in our Docker file, we expose the ports 8080 and 8081. So these are the ports that you have to expose when configuring the container. You can also configure how much CPU or memory your container should be using by default. You can use increments of 0.25 or 0.5 for example. Let's say I want to use one CPU and a hard limit of two gigabytes when it comes to memory consumption. Then I can also specify some environment variables and I want to provide the ASP.NET Core environment and I will specify the value as development. I'm doing this so that we can actually see our Swagger UI when we actually run our container instance. If I keep going down, the next important thing that I want to be using is logging. So I'm going to check the use log collection checkbox. And then you can see a bunch of optional settings like the health checks, the restart policy, container timeouts, and so on. You can leave all of these with their default values. You can optionally turn on monitoring if you want AWS to sample your traces and your metrics, I'm not going to be using this. So I'm happy with my task definition and I can click create. And you can see that my task definition was successfully created. Here we can observe what is the task size that we configured, what is the container that we are going to be running. And now all that's remaining is to use this task definition to run it inside of our ECS cluster. So let's go back to our cluster. I'm going to go into the cluster instance, the refit API cluster, and I will navigate to tasks. And from here, I can say run new task. And this is going to allow me to actually run a task instance on my ECS cluster. I'm going to use Fargate as my capacity provider, and I want to be running a task 
and not a service. We have to choose which task definition we want to run, and we only have one. We're going to be running the latest revision, which is also the only revision that we have. When it comes to networking, I'm going to be using my default virtual private cloud and the default subnets, and I'm going to leave all of the other options with their default values, and I'm going to run my task. Now you will see that our task is going to be in the provisioning state and this is going to take a few moments. If I keep refreshing, we will eventually see that the status of our task is going to update. So you can see that our task is now running. I can go into the task itself to see some more details and let's go into the logs. And here we should be seeing the logs from the ASP.NET Core runtime telling us that the application has started. So this is why it's valuable to turn on your logs. Now, what you can also do is access the public IP address of this particular task. So if I go to this address, we will be greeted with an error screen like this. And the reason is because we exposed it on the port 8080 and even this page is empty. I actually have to navigate to the Swagger UI. And after a brief moment, you will see that the Swagger interface opens up. So here we can see our Swagger UI that is now running inside of a container in the Elastic Container Service. And you can see that our API endpoints are working just fine. I can go ahead and fetch all of the products. I can fetch a single product and get the value back. I can even delete this product by using the delete endpoint. Let me try and specify some ID and we get back a response. So we have a fully functioning .NET API running inside of a container in the Elastic Container Service. A few more things that I have to bring up when it comes to running this successfully is that you will actually have to expose the port 8080 to the public. You can do this by going to the networking tab and then navigating to the security group. And here you will be able to see the inbound rules for the security group. And you have to expose the port 8080 on the IPv4 and the version 6 address, and you have to specify a wildcard like this so that it's available from any public address. If you do not do this, you will not be able to see the Swagger UI from your local machine. And now the only thing that's left is to actually stop our task instance. So I can go into the tasks, select my task, and after I have selected the task, I can click stop selected. This is going to stop our task. And from here, we can go ahead and delete the resources that we have reserved starting with the cluster. You can delete your cluster. For the task definitions, you actually have to deactivate them. They cannot be deleted from the user interface. So this is something to keep in mind if you want to clear up your resources after you're done using ECS. So this is how you can get your .NET application up and running using Elastic Container Service. If you want to learn more about AWS, I recommend that you watch this video next about working with AWS S3. Also check out my clean architecture and modular monolith courses to improve your skills and until next time stay awesome.